If you are thinking about getting Starlink, but you're concerned about what Mother Nature has in store for your internet usage, you're in luck, because I know a guy. He's been living here in the woods for about 18 months using Starlink, and he's dealt with a lot of harsh weather. Welcome to part two of my Starlink review. Here is the layout of this video, and as always, I'll provide chapter markers so you can skip around if you want to. First, I'm gonna do a brief recap of some information I provided in my first video. If you wanna watch that, I'll put a link in the description. Number two, we'll get to all the weather, the harsh conditions that I've dealt with. And number three, I'm gonna go over some changes and some updates that you might wanna be aware of. So very briefly, I'm gonna refer back to my first video. I think that it's relevant to bring this information back up again because I want you to be able to compare your living situation to mine, not in an envious way, but just sort of a matter of fact way so that you can understand what I've dealt with and kind of compare that to what you are dealing with or what you plan to deal with in the future. First of all, I have to confess, I do not live completely off grid. I would prefer to, it's, but that's not the case. But I, I sort of live partially off grid. So I cannot make a phone call or send a text or receive any of that except through the use of internet. I heat my house almost exclusively with wood and sometimes I can't even drive to my house with a 4x4 truck. So needless to say, I don't live in town. During my initial scan and setup in late 2022, Starlink was telling me that I needed to find a better spot to put my dish, but I didn't have one. But as it turns out, a few percentage points of blockage from the satellites is not really gonna have hardly any effect on day-to-day -day internet usage. For the first handful of months, my Starlink speeds were averaging about 40 to 80 for download and five to nine for upload. And it worked great for everything that I needed to do. And now to the meat of the subject. Can Starlink hold up against mother nature? Rain, freezing rain, snow, sleet, high winds, extreme temperatures. Now I realize that the weather here is not the most extreme, but in North Idaho, we do get a pretty healthy dose of all of those things that I just mentioned. And the short answer is yes. Starlink can beat all of those things. There's actually been a miniature landslide. Not long ago, we had three days of nearly nonstop rain. So much water came from the sky, in fact, that it took out a piece of the bank on my creek. When I first set up my dish on top of my roof, I was slightly concerned that water was going to work its way up into this connection in between the cable and the dish. But so far, there has not been an issue. When it comes to snow, I have been very impressed. That little dish is a snow melting machine. Even if it snows an entire foot in 24 hours, that dish can melt all of it. And that is with the setting on auto melting. Now, if you didn't know it, built into the Starlink app, you can control the amount of heat that your dish gives off. I personally have never changed mine from auto because I figured that if I'm using this product that is constructed by a company that puts rockets and satellites into space and orbits around the planet, they've probably figured out a pretty good way to melt frozen snow into water. In relation to that, there is some new information on their website that corresponds to the Gen 2 Starlink as well as their new products. It provides the snow melting capability per hour, which is about 1.5 inches an hour. It gives you the winds that it can handle and also power usage. And this part I love, for the flat high performance dish, flat, flat dish, it says it can survive 174 miles an hour. You can forget internet at that point. You don't even have a roof. We have had some wind gusts here, but thankfully, due to just the natural orientation and location of this exact property, wind is normally not an issue. But after nearly two full winters, I can tell you I am so glad that I did not have to mount this dish up in a tree and do something crazy because I probably would lose sleep over it. The spec sheet also provides operating temperatures. 
Once over the course of 18 months, I was able to witness a little bit of ice on the dish, actually. This does not happen very often. But this was because we hit a low temperature of negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And the lowest high we had during that pocket of cold was negative five Fahrenheit. And even from that, I didn't notice a change in performance. Starlink has been able to beat the rain, beat the snow, and the extreme temperatures. But in regards to the temperatures, if you look at that spec sheet, you can see I got pretty dang close to the lowest operating temperature. So if you are in an area that's colder, you've been warned. So after all that, is there anything that can get in between you and streaming Netflix on an evening after you get home from a job that you don't like? There is only one thing that I have found, and that is other Starlink users. One evening, I flop myself down on the couch, I turn on Netflix, I go to watch a movie, and it starts buffering. And it's something that I have never experienced since I got Starlink. So I immediately pull out my app, and by the way, I just wanna say, I'm not like an app and gadget guy, but having an app that you can get all of these readings and information from and kind of like an initial diagnostic of your system is so helpful, especially if you're trying to diagnose a problem, if you're using hardware and you have computer and hard drives and things like that, and if something isn't quite going right, you can immediately open up your app and just check and know if the system issue is either with Starlink or with the products that you're using. Anyways, I open the app and I run a speed test. No surprise, the speeds come in very low. But I also get a notification, a little blue bar I had never seen before. And it says, peak hours. Speed may be affected by network congestion. I put two and two together and I realize that if I hadn't made that first video telling the entire world about how wonderful I think Starlink is, I probably wouldn't have this buffering issue right now. And it also says, we expect improvements as we continue to launch our satellite constellations. The constellation, that's the name that they give to the orb of satellites that orbit around the globe. Anyways, and I'll tell you what, I don't think they're lying. I have seen a satellite launch and I think it is one of the coolest things I've seen in the sky. I was camping in Utah not long ago, as I often do, and I was having a beer around the fire. And out of nowhere, I look into the sky and I see a string of lights, probably about 20 of them, all in a perfect line, moving in a, an exact synchronous movement together across the sky. It's really cool. So either it's an alien or a Starlink. And not only that, the speeds with Starlink have increased. When I'm at home and everybody else is at work and I run a speed test, it's very common now for it to jump all the way up to 140 megabytes a second. I don't need that speed, but clearly they're adding more satellites. Speeds will still vary a lot when you do tests back to back, maybe as much as 20, 30, or 40 megabytes a second. You're not really gonna see that in the workflow, but the numbers do show it. And the only logical explanation is that your dish is connecting to two different satellites at once because those things are moving across space. On the downside, the price has jumped up. When I started, it was 110 bucks a month. Now it's up to 120. Let's talk about obstructions. When I started using Starlink, the app was telling me that I would experience an interruption about every minute. If that did happen, I did not notice it at all. But I will say that that number continues to grow that at first it said five minutes and then it would go up to eight minutes and then 10 minutes and then I saw 15 minutes. But now, sometimes that notification is completely gone. And I think that's just because there's more satellites in the air. So for everyone that's off grid or traveling the world that needs a good internet connection, I hope this helps. If you found it interesting, entertaining or educational in any way, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you want more content like this and I'll catch you on the next one. Check, 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 check. That's not really what I want to say.